Thank you for joining us for this exclusive series of discussions on key factors for business expansion to the U.S., created by Bank Lumi USA, together with Lumi Israel and Kalkalist. This series is focused on best practices for scaling up your business as you expand to the U.S. Supporting tech companies has been a main focus for Lumi USA for many years. We leverage on the strength of our deep global relationship and our presence in New York, Silicon Valley, and Israel to offer access to financial products and services designated for fast-growing tech companies operating globally. As a local U.S. player, Lumi USA is familiar with the nuances of the tech market and its changing trends. Mr. Poe is a managing partner and co-founder at Stage 2 Capital, a venture capital firm that invests in early-stage B2B software companies and sits shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder with leadership teams supporting revenue growth and sales operations. Backed by top go-to market professionals from leading tech companies, Stage 2 Capital leverages its deep sales expertise to help entrepreneurs scale their businesses in addition to providing capital. Thank you for joining me today. Thanks so much, Ori, for, for having me. I'm really excited to be here and be with the community here. Um, I think this is a topic I think a lot about, especially with our portfolio companies and companies really thinking about scaling. Um, and so really excited to, to be here and spend some time with you all. So I'm going to jump into this deck so that we can get the party started here. First of all, thanks everyone for tuning in. When Team Lumi reached out, I got really excited because this is a topic that not only do we at Stage 2 think a lot about, but this is just a topic that many entrepreneurs um, are probably also thinking about. And so if we can provide even some insights into this world of SaaS KPIs and growth modeling, hopefully it's helpful for those thinking about this topic. Um, so the topic today will be around SaaS KPIs and growth models. Um, and we'll go into some, some finer details. And then I think we'll, we'll follow up with the deck as well. Um, feel free to reach out. Uh, this is a pretty nerdy topic. We're gonna go into some numbers. And so if you have follow-up questions, please do reach out. Uh, real quick, I mean, I think my intro is already uh, sent out, but uh, just to add on top of that, we really love the, the whole um, spectrum of go-to-market. We're the first venture capital firm that was started with the thesis and focus around go-to-market. Um, so we help early stage companies, typically at that 500K, a million ARR mark. Uh, we invest capital into those companies, uh, co-lead, lead or participate. We're quite flexible on that side and help our companies really define and scale a go-to-market engine. Everything from sales, marketing, customer success, sales operations, channel strategy, et cetera. And uh, we are fortunate to be backed by over 250 of these go-to-market LPs. So they're investors in our fund and they are just lovely people that are eager to help earlier stage companies. Um, this is just a snapshot on our website. Feel free to, to check it out at stage2.capital. And, uh, and you can kind of get a glimmer for, for the people around us. So that's quick background on stage two. Let's dive into the topic. So as I started off, the first part of this, this conversation is going to be around SaaS KPIs. Um, really, how do you measure financial performance? It's something that we as investors evaluate, but also something that we think entrepreneurs should be thinking as well. Uh, and measuring constantly and always iterating how do they, they think about improvement. So this first topic around SaaS KPIs, I'll break it down a little bit into the finer points here. So how do we think about data-driven growth? Um, many of you probably have seen these metrics before. It's nothing new. Um, I bolded the ones that we're going to talk about today. Um, so you have your growth, your gross margin, your churn, your CAC payback, LTV to CAC ratios, cohort analyses, sales productivity, and bottoms up sales and marketing modeling. Um, the ones in bold are going to be the ones that I talk about here. Um, I, I think these are probably the more important ones to focus, especially if you're an early stage company. Um, so churn, we'll be talking about product market fit and customer health scoring. Uh, CAC payback is around sales efficiency. Core analyses is looking at uh, at these at customer health 
and customer performance over time. Sales productivity is around team performance. If you have an AE team and an SCR team, for example, how do you track performance? And then the last piece here is the bottoms up sales and marketing model, which talks about the pace of scaling. Uh, we also have these models on our website, so you can download it and play with it uh, and, 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 and kind of read more about it. So we'll kind of go through the ones in bold here. All right. So an example monthly bookings graph is shown here. This is pretty standard to track your higher level just company performance. So if you look at the bars and um, uh, if you can't see the below, we have color coded the different elements of monthly metrics. We have churned, we have contracted, we have retained, we have new and expansion or upsell and it's color coded. So you can quickly visualize on a monthly basis, how, how is your business performing? Everything from your net new ads. So like your new business that you're closing, new logos, your upsell and then your downsell or churn. And over time, you can look on a monthly basis, how does your kind of cohorts look on a go forward basis? So in this, this is just a, a mock example of a company uh, and its monthly performance. And you can see the gray is retained from the month prior. The new is yellow. Expansion is like upsell, it's green, contracted churn, blue and orange. This is a MRR waterfall. So this is a little bit more granular than what we saw above. Um, and this looks at the revenue side of growth. We also have logo side of growth, which we'll look at next. So this is just a look through on a monthly basis of your beginning MRR, your new logo MRR, expansion, contraction, and churn, similar to what we saw before, just shown in a, in, in, with, with numbers here. Um, and the important things to, sh to see here are, how do you think about growth? How do you think about churn? And how do you think about net churn? So monthly gross dollar churn is what are you churning every month? So you have a beginning MRR and then your churn MRR, what is the gross churn that happens in that month? For many companies, they have upsell. So we think about net dollar churn. And so that is also inclusive of upsell, contraction, and churn as well. And so this is a really important uh, indicator by looking at, at churn on a monthly basis. So that's what's written in the bottom here. This is on a customer logo basis where we're looking at purely the number of customers. So before was looking at revenue, now we're looking at logo. So this is also pretty straightforward. You have your starting logo count, you have your new that you're adding in that particular month and then churn. Similarly, we wanna look at logo growth as well as logo churn. Notice there is no net dollar logo growth because your logos are your logos. If you add a new logo, it's new. If you churn a logo, it's a, it's a churn. So there's going to be a logo churn number that you look at on a monthly basis. In general, we look for companies with net dollar revenue retention above 100% and logo retention above 90%, roughly in those, in those, in those ballparks. On a dollar basis, you want to see that upsell taking over. Maybe it's through expansion of your customer base. Maybe it's cross-selling new products or upselling or upgrading to uh, higher price tiers. Those are some examples of how we think about net dollar. All right, moving along. This is combining a couple of metrics we saw earlier and looking at sales efficiency. So in general, sales efficiency is just a great metric to look at how efficiently is your machine working? Because you have your growth numbers, that's great, but how efficiently are you growing? This is also really critical to understand as well. And so we look at like CAC payback, you might've heard of magic number. These are ways of evaluating sales efficiency. At the top here, it says CAC payback must be fully loaded and gross margin weighted. We'll walk through what that means, but essentially fully loaded means we're gonna take all of our sales and marketing costs as fully loaded CAC, and then compare that with our gross margin weighted ARR uh, or revenue. The reason you want to use gross margin is because if you have a low gross margin business, ultimately your true revenue does not tie to your bottom line more than a high margin ARR subscription SaaS business. Therefore, we want to look at efficiency 
by the true gross margin of the revenue. So going top down, you look at fully loaded sales costs, fully loaded marketing costs, so your s and spend, then you have your gross margin, and then you compare those. It's pretty simple. You have two different types of numbers. You have your magic number, which is gross margin adjusted. So it's gross ARR that's added in that month times your gross margin divided by your fully loaded s and spend. Um, then you have your payback, which is another way of calculating it. It's basically your gross margin new ARR uh, divided by your CAC times 12. So it's kind of like an inverse of that. Essentially, you want to kind of target a 12-month payback, fully loaded, gross margin weighted, for typically mid-market customer, if you're going after mid-market customers. For enterprise, it can go up a little bit higher to 12 to 18 months. SMB, which typically has higher churn, you want it to be somewhere in that six-month payback. Once again, these are just rough benchmarks and guidelines for you. Um, it obviously can, can, can change um, based on the business. All right, now we're gonna go into core analyses. We just finished looking at the high level metrics of like your business growth, as well as churn, both net dollar, as well as logo. Now we're gonna go into cohort analyses, looking at how cohorts are, are shown over time. The, uh, the actual calculations are quite, are, are quite com complex, so we're not gonna go into those specifically, but I wanna kind of share just the general like mindset around what a cohort analysis is and what it might look like. So the highest level of cohort analysis is basically taking every month worth of customers. So like your January cohort, your February cohort, your March cohort, and looking at performance over time. And then you compare cohorts so that you can see how, is your, how are your cohorts performing relative to older cohorts. The goal obviously is that you've improved your customer onboarding. The product has been improved, more features. There's more customer success investments. So over time, your newer cohorts should be performing better than your older cohorts. So these are just some examples of cohorts that we've tracked. Um, these are actually real data, real numbers. Um, you can see how from month one all the way to month 12, here's a company that has dramatically excelled and done really well with demonstrating cohort analyses. You can see over time, the dollar per cohort has gone up. So this is a really great example of a core analysis. This is an example of a not so great core analysis. You can see that over time, the revenue per that cohort is going down. And so you can see that something is wrong where over five, six months, customers are leaving. So this is an example of a, of a, of a, of a, of a worse performing cohort. Um, and then this is another one that shows over time the improvement of a cohort. If you look at like um, month eight, for example, back in the day, it was 70%, you know, 70, high 70%. And then if you look at more recent cohorts, it's in the 90%. So this is a great example of a cohort analysis. All right, great. Now we're going to go to sales productivity. Now this assumes you have a sales team of eight, uh, SDRs and AEs. And this is what we want to look at and track. How are our uh, reps performing? Um, to maintain solid performance. Remember, everything ties together. Your sales efficiency, your productivity of new logo ads, all depends on sales productivity of your reps. So this is also a key part. Um, these are just dummy numbers. This is an example of um, AE productivity by, co by quarter. So you have like four AEs. Um, what are their targets and what's the production? So, you know, as example, AE number one in uh, Q1, their target quota was 120K, their production was 134%. So the quota uh, attainment was 111%. Effectively track these monthly or quarterly uh, to track how, how productive your reps are. So this is for an AE and this is for an SDR. Similarly, they're typically measured based on the SQLs that they're, that they're bringing to the table. And similarly, you wanna track what is the quota attainment of your SDRs. Um, in general, you're not going to have perfect, you know, everyone's hitting quotas because that's probably means that your quotas aren't high enough. So we look at a 80, 80 rule, which effectively means 80% of reps hitting 80% of quota. This is typically a sweet spot. 
you might might have reps that are hitting below it or even above it. Um, and you want 80% of them to be hitting, targeting 80% of quota. Um, and this should be a good way of measuring like, all right, what should be the quota? If it's a, if it's a hundred, hundred twenty percent attainment, it might mean your quota is too high or it's are too low. If it's 60, 70%, your quota might be too, uh, high. And so this is kind of a rough line of sight for uh, a benchmark here. All right. Now we're going to talk about growth modeling. The reason we talk about a bottoms up sales and marketing model is because we want to know the answers to these two questions, when to scale and how fast. This is fundamental to the stage two framework of scaling, our science of scaling framework, which we can talk about on a separate occasion. Um, but this is really fundamental to how fast should a company think about scaling? And what I mean by how fast, it's like, how quickly do you hire reps? When do you hire and how fast? Sometimes companies often <laughs> Uh, raise, raise capital, and then think about accelerating their growth prospects and just hiring like 10 reps in a month. Um, there's a lot of capital out there. And, and oftentimes companies raise, you know, 20, $30 million and they need to, to scale and, and, and triple, triple, double hit their big growth numbers. So they tend to hire rapidly. This can often lead to problems because a company that has four reps going to 14 reps will create a lot of problems around how do you find the talent? How do you make sure you're recruiting them and onboarding the talent so that they can ramp quickly? How do you make sure you have enough managers to look after and help and support your reps? So we answer this question with a bottoms up sales and marketing model. So we'll also go through this brief, and I know I'm running up on time here, um, but we'll go through the highest level components of this um, and we also have a, a, an article blog post on our website that you can dig into a little bit more. So the two parts of the bottoms up is sales and then broader, broadly demand gen marketing lead acquisition. So the first part is sales capacity. This is pretty simple. This shows how many reps do you have? Where are they in their ramp cycle? And what is the targeted quota per rep? Usually when a rep starts, you probably have maybe zero quota that you, uh, that you attribute to them. Month two might be 25%, month three might be 50%, month four might be 80%, something like that. So you kind of pick what your ramp cycle looks like, but factor it in. You will have your full quota AEs, you'll have your ramping AEs, put them into the model. They will kind of output what is the expected ARR target or the capacity for these reps. Also, factor in AE attrition. We all know that things don't work out, AEs leave, things happen. So factor in attrition. Usually we do one attrit a quarter and just bake it in. Because what might happen is you don't factor it in, a rep leaves and you're like, oh crap, how do I, we're gonna be off in our numbers because we didn't factor in attrition. So make sure you factor in attrition. This is just rolled up into what is our expected capacity based on the sales reps we have. Pretty simple. And it's tracked by month. On the other side, we look at demand gen, marketing, SDRs, product production. Maybe it's SEO. Maybe it's um, events. There's a lot of different components to driving leads. For the example that I'll go through here, we're just looking at SDRs as the channel that you're running. And so this is also a look through, a quantitative look through, bottoms up, how many SDRs do you have? How are they producing? What is their target SQLs? What are the conversion rates from cold calls, cold email prospecting down to an SQL, down to a close? So you will have a SDR production that you can factor in as well. And you want to track that monthly. If you have X number of SDRs, you can expect a certain level of production based on the conversion rates. And so use this as an, another guideline of saying, all right, we have this many SDRs. We have this expectation on conversion rate. How many SQLs can we predict that we'll have on a monthly basis? Okay, the important thing is you, kind of, you have to match your demand gen lens with your sales capacity lens. And that's the, that's the, that's the key. You don't wanna have a scenario where you have too much sales capacity and not enough demand gen. 
because it means that your reps, you have too many reps, too few leads. What happens? They fight for them. Um, there's not enough to go around. No one hits their number. People leave. That's why you don't want to have too many AEs relative to the leads. Um, vice versa is true as well. You don't want to have too many leads and not enough AEs because it means that you have leads that are not being met. So what we look for is roughly a 1.2 ratio of leads to capacity. You know, for every hundred dollars of uh, for every hundred dollars of sales capacity, you want to have basically a hundred twenty, you know, hundred twenty dollars of leads that your reps can go after. Give them a little bit of buffer to make to ensure that you'll you'll hit your number. So one point two rough ratio of leads to sales capacity. So I think I covered the key parts that I wanted to. Um, I will wrap up there. Once again, feel free to reach, uh, reach out with questions. Um, if you are a, a company that's looking at expanding or entering the US market, you're at roughly 500K to a million of ARR. You kind of have an, a, a couple wins on the logo side. Customers are loving your product. You're measuring health scores. It seems like you've achieved product market fit. Please reach out. We'd love to, to talk with you. Um, we'd love to learn about what you're, you're working on and see how we can be helpful. Um, this is just one of many kind of components of metrics and data that we track. There are, are several others that, that, we, that we think about, but I think this is probably one of the, mo the more important ones around metrics and tracking financial performance. So hopefully that was helpful. Um, and once again, thanks to Lumi for, for hosting me. Uh, and yeah, take care and have a great rest of your week.